hopefully i'm trying a new streaming service so <laughs> please let me know in the comments below if you can see if you can see anything that will be great so streaming live to you today from beautiful british columbia canada is myself maria and my cat who's sitting on my lap so if you hear any purring that's not me that's him <laughs> so thank you guys so much for tuning in i cannot see your uh Oh, I cannot see your chats here for some reason. So I'm just going to navigate to YouTube and I'm going to pull out your chats from here, from this live stream. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. That's what's going on. So I don't have a special song for you today, <laughs> which I'm uh, singing every time I don't have anything to say. Um, so I'm just going to do la 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 la. <laughs> la 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 la. We'll check out the comments actually. We'll, we'll do a, a check later. I just want to go over some of the, the most important parts of this uh, stream. Now, the reason for which we have gathered here today is actually a question I get all the time from you guys. It's something I get in my emails. It's something I get on my LinkedIn account. It's something I get everywhere. And the question goes as follows. Hi, Maria. Can I hire you for one-on-one -on -one mentoring or tutoring sessions? And that's pretty much it. And I never answer. I never reply because I'm assuming that you guys know that if I end up teaching 100,000 people private lessons, I might need to retire before I even finish covering basic data types in Python. So we don't really do this. And yes, I do see some comments. Awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hi, love from India. Namaste, my friend. Namaste. Love from Vancouver. Ah, oh, awesome. So I do see comments. I just, uh, I didn't see them earlier. So weird. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a brand new service. What can you do? I actually switched to a different service. I used to use uh, StreamYard and it didn't work for me. There was some issues with the scrolling. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> some of you guys are calling me mom and uh, yeah, it's good. <laughs> I guess. I don't know if I'm old enough to be your mom, but still. <laughs> Cool. Let's see what it is. Man, I thought it was some private courses offer. Actually, it's not a private courses offer, but I'm going to share with you guys all the courses I took, um, the recent courses I took online. I'm going to tell you exactly what I liked about them, what I didn't like about them. And I'm also going to show you some free alternatives because what actually happens is I don't think you really need a tutor or somebody to physically guide you and show you exactly what to learn. I think what you really need is a general sense of direction because the only person who knows what you want to learn and what you want to do with your life is you. No mentor and no tutor can, can give you this information. So all I'm doing here is I'm giving you some awesome resources in which you can find everything you want to learn for free. Okay, so I prepared a really nice slideshow for you guys, <laughs> but I don't know how to run it without... Um, expanding it to my entire screen. So we're just going to go over all those uh, nice slides one by one. But before we do so, I just wanted to let you guys know that we have a really cool sound and audio code jam going on. And these are the last 24 hours to register. So please don't miss your chance to get advanced with your skills. It doesn't have to be, you know, a Python project that you're working on. All you do is you're joining a team of talented developers and you create a project together in the theme of sound and audio. The programming languages you choose, it's, it's up to you. It's not up to me. Just please go for something unique and blow our minds because you can win some really nice prizes. If you need more information about it, please check out my recent tutorial on YouTube. I'm actually going to show it to you. I'm going to navigate through my channel. Actually, it's not a tutorial. It's just an informative video. And the video I have in mind is this one, the sound and audio code gem. Brand new code gem begins, click on it. All the instructions are right over there. Now, in order to participate, the first thing you need to do is you need to join our Discord server, which you can find right over here. If you click on it, there you go. Here's our lovely screen and you can accept this invitation by Josh Persistent. And there you go. So the first thing you need to do inside our Discord server is give a huge thumbs up to our rules. Only once you do so, you'll get access to the entire server and you'll be able to chat with us. We're really, really nice people. I highly recommend. So uh, once you do so, if you'd like to participate in the Code Jam, we have some very interesting uh, channels here. We have 
uh, CJ General, which is the main, um, which is the main channel of our code jam, where you introduce yourself. And once you do so, just write some kind of a message here. Let's say hi, I'm Maria. This is a demo message. Once you send it, you'll get access to the request channel where you can interact directly with our bot, which is also known as, well, actually, it has two names. It is the Cogem bot and is Badger bot 5000 because Badger, there you go, he's right over here, is the one in charge. Okay, he, he wrote all this bot almost all by himself. So definitely, thank you so much, Badger. Awesome job. Really, really proud of you. So in order to register, the first thing you do is you do slash, you type registration, apply. Where you select the topic of the jam, which is only ooh, technical difficulties, technical difficulties. Okay, jam topic. Let's see, let's see. Mm, hopefully it doesn't fail on us. So, but yeah, you need to select the jam topic, which is only the sound and audio code jam. Then you need to select your time zone and your level of experience. We don't care if you're just beginning your programming journey, if you don't have a lot of background, you need to start from somewhere. If you cannot help with code, you can help with other things like design, testing, writing content, writing documentation. There's plenty of things to do. So yeah, and once you register, please, please make sure you also confirm your registration with registration confirm. If you do not do this, you will not participate in the jam. The reason why we need this extra step is because some people already registered a while back. And in order to confirm that they would like to attend, still, they just let us know right now because it's 24 hours before the jam begins. It begins tomorrow. And that's it. <laughs> that's all I have to say about the jam. I was trying to make it very, very quick. And we have prizes. If you'd like to find out the prizes, go to this video I showed you earlier. It's on my channel. It's this code jam sound and audio. And I'm actually adding some helper projects to my GitHub to give you some nice demonstrations and ideas. We'll talk about it after, not now. Another important thing on our Discord, before I close it and I leave, we have a really cool bot, another bot that uh, Badger also designed. This one is going to, uh, is basically a compiler bot. So you basically type some code and the bot checks whether your code is correct, whether if everything runs perfectly. So definitely check it out. It's on Discord. Yeah, go there. <laughs> and yeah, wow, that was a quick, that was a quick demo. <laughs> It was a quick introduction. So yeah, awesome. Let's take a look at the comments before I move on with the programming resources. Thank you guys so much for all your highs. Awesome. I have lots of people from places where my family comes from. Here's Georgia. Awesome. Gamarjoba, Gamarjoba. My uh, dad is from Tbilisi. Mm -hmm. And what else? France. I've been to France. Beautiful, beautiful country. Um, Ukraine. I was actually born in Ukraine, in Crimea. Greetings from Brazil. Mm, hello, hello. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Thank you so much for all your lovely comments. Badger is in the comment section. Please check in with him if you have any questions. He's really knowledgeable. Um, Josh might be here too. And if he's here, if, if they give you any type of answer, please keep in mind that they're much better at programming than myself. So if they give you an answer, you might not even want to wait for mine. <laughs> They're really good. Sorry. And by the way, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed this, but my voice today is, is not 100%. I'm recovering from a cold. I have my tea here with me. And once in a while, I'm going to make some weird noises. <laughs> it's hard to speak when you're clearly um, not healthy 100%, but that's fine. Uh, cool. So all the links that I'm talking about are in the description, both the video I've just showed you, both the, the link to our Discord server. Um, and yeah, everything is over here. Hi, hi from Mexico. Nice. I would love to visit Mexico. Uh, but online courses I, are kind of tutors. And especially for the big, yeah, for beginners, it's the best way, isn't it? I agree. That's exactly what I'm here to do. I'm here to show you that you don't need to pay some kind of a person that that will give you some guidelines to what to learn because only you know what to learn. You know, I can help you with how to learn, how to find resources for learning, but I don't want to tell you what to learn. You are the boss of yourself, not me. Let's see what else we have here. 
actually, I need to have a Python script running on a server and I just listening to API requests to run some functions when called. Does anyone have any suggestions? Uh, folks, in the comments, please let, please answer to all our friends. We have JA, which is my Slipknot friend. How are you? How are you? Great to see you. And yep, Josh is here as well, persistent. Check him out in the comments. Him and Badger are helping me out. They're very knowledgeable. So yeah, their advices are, are really, really helpful. Definitely. Cool. So let's move on with the actual lesson plan. And I'm going to catch up with the comments uh, later on. There's so many of them, but at least it's so easy to scroll. That's why I really like about this new service. I'm using Restream now. And it even looks like we're streaming on Rumble, which is very exciting because I, I couldn't do it earlier. And some... Uh, some Tea time. Sorry, guys. I need it. Otherwise, I won't be able to speak. Cool. So let's move on with the learning resources, finally. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the courses that I took. Some of them were good decisions. Some of them were very bad decisions. And we will start from a very bad decision of mine, which actually turned out to be good. Okay, this is where I learned Python. I had no idea that Python exists before this course, and that will be the AI programming with Python nano degree. Okay, let's navigate there and let's see what it's all about. Cool. So we have this nano degree program that costs about 600 bucks. That's how I paid, how much I paid for it. And it promises you that it's recognizable in the industry and you might be able to find a job after you do this. And it's so, it's, it's a nice course, okay? I finished it, everything is rainbows and butterflies. To tell you that I understood something from this course, <laughs> I cannot, <laughs> I didn't understand a thing, but I did finish the project, I did submit it, and I did pass this course. So my question is, how on earth did I pass it without understanding anything? Okay, so this is why I don't recommend it, because on top of learning Python, I also learned a lot of artificial intelligence principles, how to build neural networks, things about deep learning, transfer learning, and whatnot. Okay, now, if you don't read the fine print, okay, you would assume that you need to pay those 600 bucks. However, there is a course that is called Intro to Deep Learning with PyTorch, which is a free course on Udemy, uh, Udacity. It's a free course. It has the exact almost actually probably more content than the course I paid 600 bucks for. Okay, so there you go. This is this is your alternative for absolutely for free, okay? And it's also by Facebook Artificial Intelligence, which kind of makes sense because PyTorch and Facebook, you know, are uh, connected together. And yeah, we have here some commentary from LinkedIn. That was my exact experience with learning React with Udacity, right? So it might be a Udacity pattern you know maybe they teach you the the python commands well but they don't really teach you the principles behind uh what you're learning so how i found that it worked for me i finished this course i was very stressed because i don't want to fail something i paid 600 bucks for you know <laughs> i'm jewish guys i'm jewish if i paid for it i'm gonna follow through it's gonna happen so i submitted this and i and i took a rest for a few weeks then the only way for me to understand what I learned is was to take a piece of paper and a pen and to use the most simple example to demonstrate everything they were trying to teach me. When I was doing it on my own with a piece of paper and a pen, I realized that it was so easy. I wanted to cry. It's just that the way that they were explaining it, they were using a lot of ambiguous terms and they were using a lot of very high level language, which I found absolutely unnecessary <laughs> you know machine learning deep learning it's, it's a difficult field but you don't have to make it so difficult if you use simple words that's my philosophy so yeah now in addition in addition if you'd like to find oh my cat is leaving my cat is leaving there might be some movements on the table now if you'd like to find some free courses on udacity just like this free course i showed you go into this uh, udacity.com first of all go to the four individuals tab and select a school so this could be cybersecurity, for example. Now, if you navigate to the very, very bottom of the page, well, let's see where it is. Oh, it looks like you don't have any free courses for cybersecurity. Mm. <laughs> don't mind that. Let's go to artificial intelligence, where I know for sure there are free courses. We'll scroll down, 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 down. 
down and you can see a free courses tab and it looks like there's just a few of them but there's actually a bunch okay so all of these courses are free <laughs> okay <laughs> boom awesome problem solved here's your awesome learning resource now the reason why it's awesome even though i didn't enjoy it much is because you basically have quizzes um, you can test your the information you learn, and you can also see a lot of code examples. Also, everything is very professionally filmed in Udacity. I don't know if they explain things well, but at least the graphics are very professional, very nice. I, I can't complain because the only reason why I know Python is because I studied from them. So if you like the way, <laughs> if you like what I understand about Python, yeah, that's, that's a definitely a good start. I do recommend it. Just don't pay money for it. The rule of thumb when it comes to me and paying for a, for, for a course is, is if it's above 30 bucks, you're going to have to be convince me very well <laughs> that it's going to work for me. If it's below 30 bucks, I just, I spend it. If I want it, I spend it. It's not a lot of money for, you know, for knowledge that you, you have forever. It's not something you unlearn. Cool. Let's move on to Udemy. Now, Udemy has a lot of free courses. However, they made it very difficult to access those courses. So let's navigate to a website that helps you find the free courses because it's almost impossible to find on Udemy. They don't want you to find it because if you find it, you're not going to pay for anything. Okay. So let's let's see what's going on here. So this, don't click on any of this, those because this is a commercial. The courses I'm talking about are here under development, okay? And you have a full list of everything you need. Oh, sorry, guys. You have a full list of everything you need. You'd like to learn JavaScript. Click on it, and it's going to redirect you to the Udemy website. I checked it earlier. It works. Um, it just takes a few seconds before you can do so. There you go. We are on udemy.com, and here's a free course. Um, Beautiful. <laughs> there you go. So you have this resource also available for you. Now, whether you'd like to study web development, software development, or Android, or whatever, whatever floats your boat, it's up to you. And the only way to find if it's something that is interesting to you, if it's something that you want to keep investing in, is to try. And what a better way to try, you know, than trying something for free. So that's why I'm here, folks. Hopefully, you guys are getting lots of good advices. By the way, this entire slide is available in the links of the video in all the platforms. You can click on it. You can access it. I'm leaving it open. Um, you, you guys can do whatever you'd like with it. Now, another course. I Actually, one of the only courses I took on uh, Udemy was this uh, complete self-driving car course. Now, I did enjoy this course. However, I didn't finish it. I don't remember why. I don't remember what stopped me from doing so, but I did enjoy it. Now, one highlight of this course is if you don't know much about Python or if you know just a little bit about Python but would like to restudy things, you have here a Python crash course, which is, they say it's optional, but I think it's really nice. I, I believe I took it. I took this refresher and you also have a NumPy crash course because it's such a big such a big package, you guys, such a big library, you need to, you know, to focus a lot on it. Now, um, another thing you'll learn here is OpenCV. OpenCV is one of the, is a library I use all the time, actually. It's, it, it's something that is available for many, many different programming languages, and it deals with computer vision. So there's all kinds of cool stuff you can learn here, even the Perceptron, which I've covered on my channel. So if you're struggling with anything related to AI, which probably in many cases, those platforms are teaching with some complex words and not very simple examples, definitely navigate to my channel, to my artificial intelligence and machine learning series. This will make things more simple. Now, everything I provide you guys, it's just extra. It's something that you can practice. It's something you can uh, watch in your free time. But I'm not aiming to replace an academy or your university or, or anything of that sort. I'm just aiming to give you some extra content in case that you didn't understand some of the things earlier. Now, another thing I'm going to show you on Udemy is a course by Dima, which is one of the viewers of this channel. Let's navigate there. Let's see his course. It, it's not a free course. It is paid and makes a lot of sense because somebody worked very hard on it, but it's only 20 Canadian dollars. It's like four coffees in, in Starbucks. Now, I don't know if you're going to like this course. Check out this review and see um, see what he says. I just wanted to mention that he's viewing this channel and he's a very nice guy. I talked to him a bit on LinkedIn. 
uh, you have here a description of all his course. Now, I did watch the intro, and what is special about this course is that it gives you lots and lots of examples. So if you learn by examples, check out the intro. This might be something that is compelling to you. You might actually enjoy it. Uh, also, Dima works in uh, the industry. Dimitri, I checked. <laughs> he works in a high-tech company, so definitely you're, you're speaking to somebody who already found a job and already um, knows what he's talking about. Cool. I didn't check the course. It's up to you guys. Again, everything I'm showing you is just a recommendation. Cool. Coursera and University of London. Now, this is what I study right now, but I don't study it on my own. I study it as part of a, a bachelor's of science uh, certificate uh, program. Uh, it takes me about four years. Now, I pulled out two of my most favorite courses, and I found even more courses by another really cool teacher of mine. So let's go over this. This is university level courses. And I know it's on Coursera, but Coursera has a partnership with many different universities. One of them is University of London, where I study, uh, and Goldsmiths as well. Now, the favorite course, my all times favorite course with my all times favorite teacher is right over here, How Computers Work. Now, I find that a lot of developers are focusing a lot on the software, but especially self-taught developers, but they don't necessarily understand how it's reflected in the hardware, how the hardware of the computer is, you know, how can my program translate into ones and zeros? It, it's something so abstract. And actually this professor, Marco Giles, Giles, Marco, he's really, really explaining it well. And it's su in such simple language. He's just amazing, you guys. This is my all times favorite course, no questions asked. Now, the thing about Coursera is if you don't wanna pay a penny, you can actually access everything and try it for seven days. Now, I don't know if seven days is enough for you guys to finish a six months uh, university <laughs> module, but it's a good start. It's a good way to find out if you if you enjoy it or not. OK, so. Oh, actually, it's 10 hours to complete. So maybe it's not the complete course. Maybe it's just a portion of it. But yeah, I am so impressed <laughs> by this course. Honestly, this is the best professor I ever had. I think I learned a lot from him just by, by how he carries himself and moves around. It's truly an inspirational person. Definitely, I highly recommend. Worth every penny. Another one of my favorite courses is the Introduction to Computer Science and Programming. Um, I took it under Introduction to Programming, but they changed the name here. Uh, Dr. Edward... Einstein, and he actually does it with Professor Ketan, Dr. Ketan. I'm not not sure. Sorry, guys. I that's, that's why I remember I took it a very long time ago, but that's also one of my favorite courses. It's a P5JS course, uh, JavaScript. It's a special, it's it's like, a, it basically allows you to create video games. That's that's uh, speaking <laughs> broadly, you know, that that was my project uh, from the end of this course. If you are familiar with my GitHub account, that was Bob and the Apples. That's uh, the project you'll get uh, by the end of this course. Also, highly recommend. It's a really, really nice course. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you also from my university is Dr. Matthew Yi King, which is um, he's the director of the entire program. And he's a brilliant programmer. He has this huge passion for programming. And you can tell you can tell he has it. it. He just speaks that way. It's it's coming from his voice. He has a passion for teaching, and all of those courses are available here. There are some Arabic courses even. Wow, I didn't know they do those. Cool. So yeah, responsive websites. Actually, every time I see Matthew E. King in, in the in the course, you know that he's gonna teach the course. I am very very happy because I know I'll be learning a lot. Okay, so yeah, these are my recommendations. Now you guys know that I'm not a big fan of my university, but. <laughs> Some courses are amazing, okay? And these these are one of those, okay? The last thing I'm going to show you is something I also tried. Now, this is a subscription-based service. It is Team Treehouse. I don't know if there's anything too special about them, but what I did like, what I did like, let me show you. I like how everything is designed and it's looking very, very professional. Once again, you have a seven-day free trial and then you can go into some kind of a payment system. I believe I was paying 30 bucks per month. And then you have unlimited access to all this beauty. You can learn all kinds of different tracks. There's front end web development, there's Python, there's JavaScript, there's <laughs> Android, C sharp databases, everything you need. There's Go, HTML. So the, the, the number of 
the resources that you can find here are lim limitless. So it's amazing. I did, I did like it. I believe I took a JavaScript refresher course. I may, I think I took this front end web development course, but I think I skipped the HTML and CSS part. What I know for sure is I learned bootstrap here and I did learn uh, jQuery here. So yeah, I had it for a few months. I really enjoyed it. And I highly recommend to try it for free. Everything I'm showing you, try it for free. See if you like it. Uh, if you do, start paying. If you don't, <laughs> move on to something free. It's simple. And cool, yeah, that pretty much summarizes everything that I've done recently. And I remember. <laughs> so let's quickly go over your comments. I want to see what you wrote here. Um, cool. So, oh, I have a bunch of comments. I'm going to start from the very end and I'm going to climb upwards because I don't know which comments uh, Josh and, uh, and Badger already answered on. Okay, P5, the coding train on YouTube. Okay, there's a recommendation from LinkedIn. Uh-huh. Is Udacity worth it? Uh, hmm, probably not. The, I, I don't know. I don't think that, that anything below a Bachelor of Science or an associate degree is something that, you know, an employer will look at in, you know, in a lot of respect and in a lot of, you know, acknowledgement. I think that if you're actually looking for, for credentials, for something that that may find you a job in the future, you know, and help you out. It's either going for the project path. So either develop your professional portfolio and try it without any degree, without paying for anything. Or if you already do this, just do the full degree program. That's what I do. I have a YouTube channel. I have 100,000 followers. I, you know, people really enjoy the way I code, but it doesn't mean that I'm not going to study, you know, in advance. Obviously, I'm going to get my degree. I'm going to finish this. I'm going to make it work. You know, it's not easy. It's probably worth it. Um, what is this? Have you seen rbinkton.com? 15 bucks a month, full access to courses. No, I, I'm not familiar with it. But I generally, I tried not to recommend things that I didn't try on my own. I stay away with it. Um, and yeah, what else is here? What else is here? This, oh, I read those comments. Ah, so it looks like my comments are not being updated. That's what's going on. So it looks like Restream is not going to stay for very long. <laughs> I'm going to go over your earlier comments. Do you have any uh, further feedback on PyScript? I, I, did they have a, anything announced? I don't think so. I need to check. I haven't checked. I did get a like from Anaconda. <laughs> they are following me on Twitter, which is exciting because I'm a huge fan of Anaconda. They're one of my favorites. Uh, Favorite ways of running Python. Cool. Hi from Australia. How from Armenia? Nice. I think I think uh, Harut is the first person from Armenia I see here. I, I don't think I've seen Armenians around. Huh? Thank you. Hi. Hi. Gamarjova. Yes. Yes. We have very similar food. <laughs> we have really nice food. Greetings from Bolivia, from Madagascar. Oh, wow. Nice, guys. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, what else do we have here? Thank you. I was able to build my first neural network that was mesmerizing. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Thank you so much. It, it's hard building neural networks. It's not easy. Um, actually, I've seen a very funny post on LinkedIn not too long ago. Uh, I don't think I should pull it out because I, maybe some people don't want to be seen <laughs> through my LinkedIn. But yeah, there was a funny post saying that what was called statistics, you know, back in a day is now called machine learning. It's the same thing, but we just have a fancier name <laughs> or using a fancier name. Cool. Let's see what Badger is saying. We have tons of geographic diversity. So Badger speaks about our co-gem. You'd be surprised how many locations from all over the world are participating. Now, the reason why we encourage all kinds of locations, all kinds of countries, people from all kinds of cultures to come in is because we are taking your time zone into consideration. So our jam bot, Badger bot 5000, is, is actually um, making sure that you'll be paired with people from a, from a similar time zone to yours. Okay, so in that way, uh, if you live in India, you're going to work with people who live around your time zone. If you are, if you are, you know, in North America, you're going to be paired with North American, uh, South American, you know, <laughs> time zones. They have nothing to do with North or South. Sorry, guys, I'm blonde and I need some more tea. <laughs> so a bit more tea. Yeah. Mm. 
Lovely, lovely. Earthlings. Badger is calling people earthlings, I think, because he's not sure how to politically correct, <laughs> refer to everyone. <laughs> earthlings is good. Earthlings is good. Okay. Hi from Israel. Shalom, shalom. Anishma Idan. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. We have all kinds of diversity in here. I want to check out PyScript. Yeah, definitely do. It's nice, but it's still, it's still not there. Now, guys, for some reason, I only see messages. I only see messages from LinkedIn. That's it. My YouTube messages are gone. What's going on, folks? What's going on? Okay, let me pull out the stream. If I only knew how to quickly go in <laughs> to the live studio, view on YouTube, or live in control room. That's right. So I am navigating to YouTube. Perfect. And now I can see your comments here. So, folks, it looks like I'm not going to be using uh, Restream very often. <laughs> I've missed a lot of your comments from here. So, yeah, yeah. Let me just turn off this comment I see here. I'm not sure how to pull your comments to the screen from YouTube, but that's fine. That's fine. I'm just going to answer to them um, as we speak. So, I see Juan's message about Twitter. I was on Twitter. Great. That means we are streaming on Twitter. That's great. <laughs> Persistence is it, persistent is saying quiet. She's watching. I am. I am. Be careful. <laughs> we have Richard here. Great to see you, Richard. Do you want me to say hi? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. We have uh, Mario. Hello, Mario. You have a great name. That's the name of my spouse. Super Mario. <laughs> he's not a plumber, but he's doing something very close. Cool. What else we have here? Bob. Bob is saying many hiring teams will look for a qualification. Yes, but they will ask deeper technical questions as there are so many different qualifications and courses. Sure. Absolutely. Different companies, I find they have different um, they have different hiring standards. They have different um, human resource people working with. Sometimes the owner of the company is doing the hiring. In those cases, th there's a chance you can actually find a job without any qualification. When you're dealing with a human resource person, I don't know how, I don't know if they know the significance of your project. I don't know how much they actually check, um, check you out rather than some dry facts about you. I don't know. Uh, it's something that we will need to discuss with some human resource people. I promise I'm going to start contacting them. I'm going to start interviewing people um, on, in a podcast kind of an environment. It's going to happen soon. But once my, my voice is back, <laughs> we'll do it. Okay. We have Robert Murphy here. Um, he's, he's recommending a YouTuber, Amigos Code, on YouTube. Does a lot of nice tutorials covering Java, Spring, Angular, and lots of other stuff. Cool. Check him out for sure, for sure. Actually, let me let me uh, pull it aside. Let me show you all those comments. Let's see, let's see. Huh? Huh? Look what's going on. Look what's happening. Huh? Huh? Okay, perfect. That's that's how I'm gonna leave it. Awesome. And as I'm reading your comments, I'm gonna highlight them. Okay, we have folks from Bangladesh and India and Iraq. Hello, hello, Ahlan was Sahalan. Well, wild slots. I thought it's Walid for some reason. Ahlan was Sahalan. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, 1915, the movement Armenia. Aha, uh -huh. probably something political. Not sure. Not sure, guys. We have serial port. Yeah, I have learned so much, but also discover very large knowledge gaps too. I actually agree because I find that it happens a lot with self-taught developers. We kind of just, we go, 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 and we don't notice the things we miss. So for example, with me, <laughs> I didn't know how to, con this, this is very embarrassing. I didn't really know how to, <laughs> how to convert decimals into binary. <laughs> Before I started my degree, it, it's ridiculous. I, I don't know how it happened, but it's just something that I never thought of. Um, none of the things I was doing regarding web development had anything to do with bytes. Uh, apparently had nothing to do with bytes, but every, everything has to do with them. Everything has to do with binary. Everything on computer is actually essentially being translated into binary language because that's what the computer understands. Um, yeah, there, there are lots of gaps in knowledge when you study on your own. That's why it's not so bad to, to take this 
this type of courses that actually cover a vast majority of the information you need, um, especially, you know, when it's professional platforms and when it's professional teachers. Just to remind you guys, a lot of YouTubers, they are not teachers, myself included. Some of us, we don't even have a computer science degree. I'm still working on mine. That's why if you want to learn from somebody, it's a good way. Uh, please check who this person is and <laughs> what he can uh, what he can actually teach you. Um, cool. Robert is asking, Robert Baker, how do you manage to balance your personal and professional life? Did you just have to buckle down for days with coding? Um, the more time passes, the easier it gets. It's very hard. I, I find that the, the worst part about it is working from home. I didn't work from home. In, I think I started only in 2019. Before it, I didn't even think it's an option. <laughs> I was working in the office. I had, you know, I, I had people working, I, colleagues. I was communicating with people and I really loved it. And, and since 2019, I'm, I'm home. And that's the hardest thing to mention because this is where I relax. This is where I cook. This is where I hang out with my spouse and with my friends. This is not where I work. So <laughs> it's a tough, it's a very tough balance. Now, one important thing I wanted to mention is that I'm just back from a vacation. I had a vacation for two days on the on a beautiful Vancouver Island. I was in Victoria. I was in Nanaimo, which is not as beautiful. But <laughs> I wanted to, to see some really nice places. I was on a ferry. And during this trip, I was actually working. I was working on two occasions. The first one was within the hotel. When we were resting, I just pulled out my computer. I was working on uh, on this uh, Code Jam video that I posted not too long ago. And then uh, we, when, we, when we were waiting for the ferry back uh, to the mainland, I was actually working some more. I was working on the dictionary comprehension tutorial. So it gets easier. When you have a system, when you have a schedule, when you know that today I am planning a tutorial, tomorrow I am filming this tutorial, and in the next two days I am editing it. You just need to have a schedule. If you don't have a schedule, you go lost. Now with me, I don't I on top of my channel, I also I'm also a student. So I need to manage some deadlines in terms of uh um midterms and, and final exams, and you know, I just need to balance my life in such way that makes sense. Um, but yeah, it's it's an it's something you acquire. It's not something that comes very easily. It's just, uh, it gets better with time, yeah, I find. Uh, what's the library you recommend for analysis of images for medical purposes? Um, I'm a big fan of OpenCV. Uh, that's my favorite Python library to work with when it comes to images. The reason is it's a C Python library. It's very, very fast. It's written in C, implemented in Python. You can apply it in many, many different programming languages. I don't know. I don't have much knowledge in terms of medical purposes. I don't know what, what kind of purposes you have that are different from other, um, other applications. But, but yeah, OpenCV is probably one of my favorites. Pillow is nice too, but Pillow is Python only. So realistically, it should be slower. I would go, uh, if you can get away with C Python libraries, go for them time and again. People keep saying that Python is slow. It's not right. It's not true. You know, you can choose what libraries to use. Some of them are faster. Some of them are slower. It's up to you. Don't blame Python. <laughs> it's not Python's fault. Okay, what else? I like the fact it is easy to find many different ways of teaching the same topics. If one explanation doesn't work for you, try another serial port. I 100% agree with you. That's why people, I think, I think that's why people are watching. You know, I'm not a teacher. I didn't finish my degree. And yet there's some things I'm saying that teach people. So <laughs> I think I find it very, very interesting, especially, you know, especially when it comes to things that I didn't understand in university. So right now I'm planning an algorithms and data structures uh, type of course, um, type of series. And uh, the reason why I'm planning it is because it's one of the hardest topics for me to understand in university. I, my grades are amazing when it comes to algorithms and data structures. But before I come to the test, I come so confused. And so I, I have zero confidence in what I actually understand. So right now I'm sitting down and I'm simplifying everything in, in such easy terms that everyone can understand, regardless of your age, regardless of your level of programming experience. I don't care. I want everyone to be able to understand this because only that way I feel like I, I truly covered a topic. If it's something that I need to, to explain in a separate video, I didn't do my job well. Uh, tea time. <laughs> my voice is disappearing. Sorry, guys. Mm. 
Awesome. Cool. What else do we have here? Uh, what else do we have here? Way too many classes, guys trying to teach how to be a developer. Um, yeah, too many is actually a good thing. I think <laughs> the more, the merrier, the more, the merrier, as far as I'm concerned, how can I make about us page using Kinter us page? I'm not sure. Shyam, I didn't understand your question. I did not understand my apologies. Bonjour de France. Bonjour. Bonjour du Canada. <laughs> I paid 400 plus bucks for Udacity and I'm mad. They don't help you in any way. Yeah, yeah. Imagine how pissed off I am when I pay way more than this to my university and they still ignore me. So <laughs> there's one problem with, with, you know, paying money to a facility over the Internet, a facility that is nowhere near your country. You know, <laughs> they know for a fact that tomorrow morning you won't be knocking on their door <laughs> asking for demanding answers. No, they know you will not do it. That's why they can ignore you. So I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I'm losing interest in recorded videos when compared to live sessions. I agree. Actually, it's a really nice format of communicating with people. I think it replaces live television, you know, cable television. I don't have cables for many, many years. I think since I came to Canada, which is almost a decade, <laughs> I don't have cables. Um, so I kind of watch what I want to watch. And I think that this type of format, it, it gives you so much choice. Um, I, I really like it. It's so interactive. I do agree. I like it, too. Uh, what's shout Coursera instead? Hmm. Not sure. Not sure what you mean. Screenba has free courses too. React and Python were good. Awesome. Thank you so much for recommending. Okay. What else? Okay. The problem I have with Udemy is that they have been known to sell courses without the permission of the content owner. Oh, wow. That's nasty. Maybe they have changed their practices. I don't know. I spoke to Dima not too long ago, um, the guy that I showed you his course, uh, one of the viewers of the site. Um, and uh, I don't think he complained. I, I didn't see him complain, but I can double check with him on LinkedIn. I can check. Um, the thing about Udemy, I do have a lot of requests to, to film some kind of a series for Udemy or platforms of that sort. And I, <laughs> I never do this. I don't believe that I should charge you for what I show you, especially because I'm still a student Nothing qualifies me to be a teacher yet. And even when I am fully qualified to teach, and when I, even if I finish, you know, everything that teachers finish, still, I don't feel comfortable charging you money for something I can give you for free. You know, I, I believe that education should be free. I believe that everything that you receive online should be free. And I'm just, I'm, I'm a hippie. <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> I believe hardware has some free computer science content. That's right, Badger. Harward, which you can find actually under the name IDX or EDX, EDX, I believe. That's Harward, Harward, if I'm not mistaken. So let's uh, search for courses. Now, I'm not sure how to find their free courses. Um, let's see if they have, maybe they have a nice list of all subjects. Yeah, I don't know if you can access only the free courses, but they have so, so many of them. And in many cases, um, you would see a course and it would be for free unless you would like a certification. So if you'd like to get a certificate in the end of the course, you can just pay like 60 bucks for it and uh, you go just off you go. Now, funny fact about EDX. I got so excited. Uh, the fact that they're such a prestige, you know, uh, such a prestige facility <laughs> at first that the first course I signed up to was actually artificial intelligence with R, not with Python. I almost started it. I almost took it. And I almost never found, I, I almost was clueless about Python. You know, I'm glad I didn't. Something in the last moment was telling me, I don't know if I like this R thing. <laughs> so I ended up uh, signing up to uh, Udacity. Yeah, that's, that's my story. But yeah, EDX. Also a nice platform. I don't know if it's better because I never finished any of their courses. I think I started. Uh, I started the R course. I can't tell you I was impressed, but I can tell you that there was something wrong with it. It's just it's a nice alternative to the rest of the platforms I was showing you earlier. Yep. Cool. What else do we have on YouTube? Let's see. Thank you, M. Now you're double MM. <laughs> Mentor M. <laughs> nice. Nice. 
uh, I need another M. I need a three M. Okay, we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna figure out which one it is. Magical. I want magical there too. <laughs> I think nowadays we can learn any subject from a lot of resources for free. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why people like me have YouTube channels. We want you to learn for free. We don't want you to pay money for people if you don't have to. So I was thinking to learn more maybe from some lectures. So the thing is you can find so much information. You just need to kind of narrow down what you want to learn. That's, that's the hardest part. And if you don't want to narrow down, try as many things as you can. Um, the more you try, the, the better idea you'll have about what makes you happy, what, what is interesting to you. Um, yeah, I come from graphic design. I ended up not finding it interesting. And when I came into AI, I was, ah! it was amazing for me. So that's, that's where I stayed. Now I'm more into GUIs and, and video editing and marketing and things that have nothing to do with, <laughs> not a lot to do with programming, but it is, you know, opportunities come, you catch them. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So the more you learn, the better. Okay. Itamar, shalom, shalom. Is it possible to create 3D games in Python? I don't like C Sharp and C++. Hmm. You can draw 3D in Python. This, this is something we have abilities to do, but I don't know if Python can beat C Sharp when it comes to gaming. It's something that probably best to ask. Um, I'll ask my brother. Yeah, he'll, he'll probably know. Um, yeah, I think that C Sharp is the language that that is mostly used in game development. Now, if you're trying to create a game for yourself, maybe something for, for the cell phone and things like that, sure, use Python, use uh, Kiwi, you know, you, you can uh, convert it into a, you can convert it to, into a mobile ap application. You can actually draw 3D graphics with many libraries. You can do this with DearPy GUI. You can do this with uh, with, with uh, Pi Game, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's something that you have the ability to do, but I don't know if it's being actually applied. It's a solution, but I don't know if it's an industry acceptable solution. That's something you'll have to find out on your own. I would probably use C Sharp for that. I, it's, it's, that's the convention. Hmm. What can you do? That's what they do. I, I actually almost studied um, programming for game uh, development. I almost signed up to a really nice academy here in Vancouver because Vancouver is all about gaming and uh, and movie industry. There's a lot of academies that teach you that. They take 40,000 bucks for a one-year program, but after this year, they find you a job and you start working and everything's fine. My friend finished it. I, I think he's really, really happy. I didn't catch up with him lately, but uh, he was very, very happy in what he was doing. You go into the office and you have like a drawing pad and you have your computer next to it. It's really, really fancy. Uh, not too bad. Uh, does free courses have certificates? Yeah, some of them. Alejandro, I love your picture. This is Kenny from South Park. <laughs> uh, yeah, free courses, they have certificates. But the question is, are those certificates actually, do they actually count? <laughs> Will an employer look at those certificates and be like, oh my God, I'm so excited? Mm, I don't think so. I think your projects are more important than any certificate you can collect from those online academies unless your certificate comes from a university, like some facility that is very widely known, if it's an associate degree, if it's a bachelor of science, that that is something else. Sorry guys, tea time, tea time. My apologies, I'm losing it. Mm. I'm surprised I can speak yesterday. I, <laughs> I tried to go live yesterday. I sounded so bad. <laughs> I sounded so bad, you guys, it's so manly. <laughs> I was talking like that. <laughs> now it's a bit better, but still, still, it can go, it can be better. Cool. So what else do we have here? Should I go back to my uh, restream screen? Should I see what's going on here? No, no new comments, only from LinkedIn. What is up with you, restream? Uh, what is this? Oh, you know, if one thing is fixed. Another thing is, is not Oh, that's not fun. That's not fun at all. Yeah, new comments will display here. Let's see if it works. So far, I can only see uh, LinkedIn comments. Let's see. Like if we look at simple for loop, I get how it works and I can talk about what the loop does at every step. But because I am visual learning, I just feel like I'm guessing. Well, so what I find that helps me is examples. Every time where I see an example of how to do something, this is where my mind starts 
you know, working. If I don't have it, it's very hard for me to, uh, it's very hard for me to grasp the topic. Yeah, let's remove this thing. I, I, I don't know what to do, you guys. I don't know what to do. I was hoping that this uh, restream will fix all my streaming problems, but uh, it just added new ones. <laughs> it fixed one problem, but everything else just remains the same. Um, now, if you're looking for some good examples, I think that uh, GitHub offers a lot of them. In very, in many cases, I just type, I just Google something, um, I skip Stack Overflow, and I go directly to GitHub. See how people go about it. Um, depends on what you do. Depends on what you do. Um, if it's a GUI application, if it's something that is uh, that is a bit more complex, I have to see an example. I cannot just start uh, with theoretical knowledge. I have to start with an example. But that's just me. <laughs> Some people are like that. OK, what else do we have here? Uh, I jumped into this because I have experienced writing Python and JavaScript, but I struggle with uh, lead coach, lead code challenges for the interview process. So I'm looking for a tutor or mentor to help me through those. Is that a good or bad? It's, it's not really called a mentor. So um, how am I going to I'm just going to. No, I can't. I'm just going to leave this comment because I think it's important for you guys to see. And you only see my my uh, my face, which is enough. OK. <laughs> so what you are actually looking for is something called informational interviews. So in order to be hired for a job, you don't really need a, you know, a mentor that is a general programmer. You're looking for somebody who works in the job of your dreams. So, for example, you would love to work on uh, Tesla's autopilot. You would love to, uh, to you know, engineer it and train it, or maybe you're just an aspiring data scientist. You're just starting your journey. You would like to help them arrange the database and do all kinds of things of that sort. Um, you can reach out to people who work in Tesla, particularly in their autopilot department. Add them on LinkedIn and write them a message saying that, hi, if you don't mind, can I, can I ask you for a cup of coffee, you know, somebody from your region that you can physically meet, meet, not just talk over the phone or something. Somebody you can come to a coffee shop and, you know, and treat them with a, with a nice coffee or or whatever, a nice breakfast, whatever you decide. Coffee is usually what, what people do. Um, and over coffee, can I ask you a few questions about your experience in, in Tesla and in working in data science and artificial intelligence. And while you ask him, you don't really try to get hired for a job. All you do is you gather information. So are you happy with what you do? That would be the first thing I ask. If you could do things differently, um, if you could go back in time and do things differently, what would you change? You know, things of that sort. Um, how many years have you studied for this? What is your experience? What would you recommend for somebody like me who has this and this experience? What would you recommend me to do? Um, things of that sort, just general questions. Now, it doesn't get you hired, no, but you have much more information about the company, the position, and the type of people you'll be working with, the type of challenges you'll be facing. Another important thing is networking. Maybe this meeting that you had with this, this random employee is not going to get you a job. But guess what? Maybe in two weeks, they'll be looking for an intern. Maybe in a month, he'll be thinking about you like, hey, I spoke to this person. They seemed so nice. I want to help them. You don't know who you meet. You don't know what kind of people you're, you're, you encounter. Sometimes you'll get into somebody's heart and they would love to help you. You don't know. In any case, it helps you with making valuable connections in the industry. OK, and when you meet those people, it's no longer a far fetched dream. This is something you can achieve because you're talking to real people and they're giving you real advices. So what you're looking for is an informational interview. This is uh, the industry standard of how how it's being called. Many people would agree to meet you. I had an informational interview in regards to data science. It's something I did through actually not exactly through LinkedIn. It's it's a contact I do have on LinkedIn, but it's a contact that I personally met. I just never. I never thought of getting his phone. You know, I knew I knew he was uh, dealing with AI and machine learning. I just we, we were in a band. Uh, there, there was a really nice band here, the Juice. <laughs> you know, I was singing there for for a day, and then I deleted my WhatsApp so I couldn't attend <laughs> any meetings. I was I was slowly moving away from social media during that time, and 
I didn't think that I might need his uh, his help in the future. And then a few years passed, and I was um, I was looking for a job, and I was um, there is a place here that helps you find a job. Uh, it's a British Columbia service. It's Work BC, um, and I had this uh, meeting. Um, with a bunch of people and we were having this course on how to write resumes and one of those people he happened to be a contact of the of this guy that i met in the band um and he's like well if you're doing artificial intelligence why don't you talk to him i was like yeah let's do it yeah give me his phone number and yeah we had a nice informational interview i understood exactly what are the the first steps of somebody who wants to be a data scientist. And in many cases, that would be just collecting data, just making databases, just, uh, you know, if you have, for example, if it's the Tesla autopilot you're working on, you'd be filming um, or collecting footage of dash cams or whatnot um, and kind of labeling it in a database in an organized way. Uh, you'll find work. You'll find things to do there. Okay. Let's see. What else do we have here? Print, hello, Maria. Hello, hello, Dan. Nice to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you to all my LinkedIn friends. Awesome. Great to see you guys here. I'll jump into uh, YouTube in just a second. I want to learn a web framework. What do you recommend, Django or Flask? Now, Django, a lot of people love Django. Absolutely do. I do not have any tutorials on the topic, okay? So that's why I'm recommending flask <laughs> obviously okay so navigate to my channel uh, it's uh, python simplified okay and here you can find an entire series of gui applications actually no that's popular uploads we are looking for we're looking for guis that's right we got it here and i have a bunch of tut no Never mind. I'm just going to show you it in the video uh, video list. I have this tutorial, uh, SQLite and Flask application, which is very handy because it's actually using a database. It's using an SQLite database. And I have a much simpler application. Uh, where is this video? Where is this video? There, uh, there you go. Flask application, simple Flask application. That's just a hello world app. Super, super easy, super simple, but it will get you up to speed. It will show you where are the folders where you need to uh, save your files. It will show you how to run your software. Um, yep, all the information you need. Now, Flask, uh, Django, I'm going to cover it on the channel eventually, I promise. I, I promised it for a while, but I think before I move on to Django, I want to cover PyWeb.io. I promised them a very long time of video. I didn't get a chance to do it. And generally, I want to start covering more open source projects. I know it's important. It, I don't always have the time, but I'm working on it. It's going to happen. OK, um, next, a Dear Pi GUI tutorial is coming very, very soon. It's going to be really, really nice. Cool. Now, oh, before I forget, guys, before I move on to the YouTube comments, I just wanted to show you a new repository of mine on GitHub. And this one uh, is meant to uh, assist with the coding gem. Now, in our coding gem, you don't really have to use Python. You can use any other programming language. And the reason why you are, it's, it's fine for you to do so is because Python is not a common language to use in, you know, in music applications. Not because there's something wrong with it. It's just there's not a lot of examples showing you how to do this. So I have this really nice repository, Python Music Player, where I'll be uploading some projects. Now, one of those projects is using Pygame only. Another project is using the Pygame audio abilities, and it's using Dear Pi GUI GUI abilities. Now, the reason why, actually, I, I can actually run those apps. They're very, very simple. They just contain a start, stop, a, a play, stop, and pause button. And they're, they're dealing with some very basic functionality. Now, obviously, I'm going to build a nicer application with this. I'm going to do a nice uh, um, sound wave drawing there. That's what I'm struggling with at the moment. I couldn't find an example for it yet, but I will. I'll look into it a bit more. And yeah, this repository will keep you know expanding. I'll keep updating it. I'm just going to comment it on YouTube. There you go. You have it on YouTube. Um, if you're on LinkedIn, my apologies. Just go to the YouTube uh, video. <laughs> you can fetch it from there, or you can just go directly to my GitHub, Maria Shah. Important detail, guys. I have an imposter on GitHub now. So it's Maria Shah 8888. 
people are pretending to be me. This is not me. <laughs> this is not me. And I actually left a very nice uh, issue. I opened an issue here. Let's uh, pull it out. It's like, why are you pretending to be me? <laughs> it's a really good question, folks. <laughs> like, and it's funny because they have their name. Oh, I'm not going to show their names or anything. Let me just leave. But yeah. <laughs> It's just so weird, you guys. People pretend to be me, and while they pretend to be me, they tell everyone who they are. <laughs> you can you can find their, you know, they, they, there's links to their personal accounts and everything. So if you already pretend to be me, do it right. <laughs> Don't reveal your personal identity. And I think it's because people think that I'm I'm nice. I, I am nice. I'm not chasing anybody. I'm not avenging anything. The only person that I actually chased was an Instagram imposter that I spammed the hell out of them. <laughs> I really spammed them. I don't know if they're still there. Let's check Instagram.com. That was, I think, Maria Sha 8881. Let's see. 8881. Let's see if they're still there. Nope. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> Awesome. It worked. <laughs> so yeah. So if you'd like to spam your imposters, I actually have a copy of this code on my <laughs> GitHub as well. Remember, Maria Sha on GitHub, not Maria Sha 8888. No, that's not me. You know, find something that, that, you know, I have a bunch of followers in because that's probably me and not somebody else. And it's funny because they actually, the imposters, they even, they even lead to my email. You know, they, they send links to my Python Simplified channel, which is another weird thing. I, you know, and I don't want to be mean to people. I don't want to chase anybody. But at a certain point of time, I might have to start doing that. Oh, and I still have here. Finally, first comment from YouTube on Restream. Thank you so much, JA, for it. Python Simplified. You said before I forget that. <laughs> which is a Slipknot song. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Okay, okay, I got you. Actually, in the previous um, in the previous list comprehension uh, tutorial, I had a moment where I was talking about uh, about you are the master of strings or something of that sort. And and the first scene, which I had to refilm because it was, I don't know if you guys will get the joke, but the first, you know, as I said, <laughs> this master of strings thing, I started drumming with my hands the master of puppets. Bam. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you'll get the joke, so <laughs> I re-recorded it. It was the banana name <laughs> part, so yeah, um, I, I do end up re-recording a lot of my jokes because I, I have stupid jokes. <laughs> That's why streaming live may not be a very good <laughs> idea for me, but I'm working on this. I'm working. I'm getting better at this. Okay. Hello to my friends from Pakistan. Hello. According to your experience, what... Um, let me just remove this because it distracts me. What layer the, are the parameters we are able to recognize from human images? Only if it's a man or a woman. Oh, you can recognize everything. Honestly, you can recognize any region of interest. What with the color of your eyes? How are your pupils dilated? <laughs> you know, you, you can you can go to like the structure of your nose. You can go. You can even recognize people wearing masks these days. It's insane. You know, the abilities to um, to recognize things within images are growing faster with, first of all, with the data, the amount of data we are collecting. And you guys are not aware even of how much of your data is being collected. And you voluntarily provide it, by the way. To those of you who have a Facebook or Instagram, I used to have them. I don't have them anymore. I know exactly what they do to me. So when you think about... So, so first of all, what people think think is that people think that the only thing that they're tracing is the content that you voluntarily provide. So, for example, if you upload a, a picture, right? If you upload a a post, you think that this is the information that they collect, but that's not entirely right. I believe since 2015. So cor correct me if I'm wrong. I might be wrong on this one, but Instagram is is actually using this camera which you have at the top of your phone, your front camera to collect your reactions to certain images. So they actually track if your pupils dilate. So if your pupils dilate, that means that you like it. If they don't, they recognize micro expressions on your face and they see how you react to things. So they don't just collect the information you provide them, but they also collect all your interactions with the platform, including things that you wrote and you didn't post, including things that you just 
thought, you know, for example, for example, you know what, I'll give you a really nice example. If there is a certain actor, let's say that I love Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt is my favorite, okay? I don't have to follow Brad Pitt. I don't have to comment on his posts in order for Instagram to know that I really like him. Okay, because all they need is to look at my pupils. They look at my pupils, they'll start pushing me Brad Pitt content. Why? Because uh, there's a bigger chance I'll interact with it. There's a bigger chance that if I see this picture, I'm going to stay on a platform for longer. So the objective is not to make you happy, is not to connect you with people, is to keep you on the platform for as long as you can. And that, that goes across all, all, all the platforms. Serial port without notifying customers is incorrect because every time you get a message of we have updated the terms of service, you automatically agreed. The only way for you to disagree is to delete your account. As long as you're there and you, you, you obey to their terms of service, you belong, your information belongs to them and you voluntarily provide it. That's just it is what it is, folks. That's why I'm not on Instagram. That's why I'm not on Facebook. That's why I'm not on WhatsApp. Okay. I'm I I don't know. I'm on Twitter, right? Which is not much better. But I I had a feeling that Twitter will go open source. I had a feeling that Elon Musk will do something about it. Um it's not the case. <laughs> it's not the case as we've seen. So uh I'm I'm not leaving Twitter. Again, if I got a like from Anaconda, if Anaconda is following me, I'm not going anywhere. I love Anaconda. <laughs> cool. Oh wow, awesome. So I'm getting getting all your YouTube comments now here in front of me on Restream. What is wrong with you, Restream? What took you so long? Holy smokes. Um okay, Badger is still here. Perfect. Perfect. Badger is very smart. Listen to him. <laughs> What languages are they using in your university? Oh, it's, it, I don't think there's a limitation on this. I think different courses using different languages. I actually took a Python course by accident for this semester, <laughs> unfortunately. But yeah, so far um, they were teaching HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript. Uh, they they taught a tiny bit of handlebars, um, P5JS, which is part of JavaScript. C++ is something I already went over. I believe C Sharp is also on the list, even though I'm not sure. Um, hopefully, they'll teach me some um, some uh, R too. I'm curious. I'm curious to see how R compares to Python. Okay, Richard is saying, Brad Pitt is not tall. He's a very short person. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. Brad Pitt is not my favorite. I, I'm just, I just gave him as an example because he's he's famous. Okay, I like I like I like people who look like uh, my spouse. <laughs> I I like um actually he he would remind you of Dragner uh Loth how, how do you call Dra Ragnar from uh, how do you call him Vikings? You know the Viking king. You know that's that's the closest actor to to how Mario looks like, and that's my favorite. <laughs> awesome what else do we have here this is why i have a sticker on my cameras i do have stickers on my uh laptop my laptop always have stickers on i never remove it but for my for my phone i take too many selfies <laughs> i can't remove it it's just there yeah i i assume that if my phone is around me i'm, I'm being somewhat surveilled i cannot say that i'm living in paranoia but uh it's kind of surveilling you kind of I'm looking for what I should learn for developing a big project. I mean, big project. Have you any recommendations on what I should learn? I started to design patterns. I'd, again, it depends on the nature of your project. What exactly are you trying to build? Are you trying to build a media player? Are you trying to build a uh, rocket launching software? I don't know. It depends on your objective, okay? And, and when you start researching about how you're objective is usually done, you know, do something that if it's your first project, if it's the first project you do, please do not start with something big. Okay. Start slowly and surely take your time, do it step by step. You can build an application that will work. Okay. You can build a very big application that will be, a, you know, bundled across hundreds of pages and it will be huge, but it doesn't mean it will work well. Okay. Just because something works, doesn't mean it works efficiently and it's it's you know suitable for the resources you have. So in the end of the day, if you're just a beginner, 
please do not go for big projects. If you're just beginning your programming journey, focus on how to make things work, okay? Once you have a few of those projects, once you are proficient with what you do, once you feel a bit more confident, okay? Once you build a few games, for example, a Sudoku game, a game of trivia, a game of Tetris, whatever, some games you're very familiar with. Once you have a few of those projects that work, you know, it doesn't mean they work well, you can then move on into optimizing them and make sure they are working very well. So what do I mean by optimizing? Make sure you're using the right algorithms. Algorithms are just sets of instructions. Even though there are several ways to achieve the same result, only one way, actually only a few of those ways may be more suitable to your application than other ways, okay? So good algorithms are much more important than good computer hardware, okay? Learn your algorithms. Be better at what you do. A good example, there are different searching algorithms. There's linear search. There's bubble search. There's all kinds of different ones. Some of them take longer to run. Some of them take more resources. You need to understand their differences in order to write efficient programs. So software design and development is not entirely what I show you on my channel. I show you how to get things done, okay? But how to optimize them, how to get them, them done in the perfect way, in the in the best way, uh, you know, it's it's up to you. It's something that comes with experience. I don't think that there is a one set of guidelines you need to follow. I've, I haven't encountered it yet because different applications, different usage have different, you know, different purposes. You will do different things for that. Okay. So uh, start small, slowly and surely. Or else I'm going to have some Tina meanwhile. They still keep your data even if you delete your account. Mm. You can request a copy of what they have. That's about it. Um, I think YouTube, no, I think um, Facebook was uh, keeping my data for 90 days. I may have left before they changed to, to those rules you're mentioning right now. I've left way, way before other people started to leave. Um, and back then it was 90 days that they were saving your information and then they erased it. Now. Just because they say they're erasing it, it doesn't necessarily mean I believe them, okay? Because I have no way of verifying if they're saying the truth or not. But uh, yeah. What can you do? What can you do? I, you know, I'm just assuming that if I'm not on Facebook, I'm not really interested. I'm not really interesting to them. That's how I see it. Okay, I need a library. Python to develop applications with, in Python with library I use. I, I didn't understand the question. I'm sorry. It, it, just be specific about what you need this library for. Um, it's it, it, Just make specific questions and I'll be able to answer them uh, better because it's too ambiguous. It's too ambiguous. Uh, then we are being forced to agree. This, this uh, yeah, uh, this is referred to, to the community guidelines and all the difference in, uh, um, once you get updates, terms of service, inside your uh, applications, inside your social media applications. How can I make my assistant via Python? I don't wanna use Google TTS because it's not support my language. Um, hmm. So check out, I have a few libraries to recommend actually. There's rejects, regular expressions, uh, which is a Python library. Like, again, I don't know, it depends on the language you use. Cause I believe a lot of those libraries there are they are specific for English, I believe. I'm, I'm not sure. I worked with them only in English. I never explored any other languages with them. But in Python, the, the main libraries uh, that deal with languages and with uh, processing uh, speech is basically Regex and NLTTK, Natural Language Processing Toolkit. I've used both of them. They're really, really nice. I have a tidy tutorial um, that is using them. I'm not going to recommend it because it's way too old. But yeah, just start, uh, Google it, Google everything, see what people are using, make, do a research, uh, see what is, uh, the, the industry recommends. Matrix has you, Masha. <laughs> Follow the white snake. <laughs> nice. <laughs> love it. Love it. <laughs> By the way, Masha is Maria. You know, it's, it's, it's like Alexandra and Sasha. It's the same thing. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Matrix has all of us folks. I don't know if you've noticed, but in the past few years, we are very, uh, and that's not talk about it. 
<laughs> I don't want to go into it. I'm going to stop before I even started. Maybe on Rumble. <laughs> we might. <laughs> Can we check whether images is black and white or color using Python? It's a good question. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, hmm, probably, yeah. If it's black and white, you are dealing with uh, a hue of zero for black and a hue of two fifty five for white. So you can actually, you can actually load this image into NumPy, for example, um, from from bytes from. Uh, from list, there are all kinds of methods to do so. I have some really nice uh, uh, NumPy tutorials, which I'll recommend you, but most likely you'll find your solution in, in the documentation instead. Okay, let's uh, let's see. Actually, let's go to the video section where I have three different NumPy tutorials just right over here. So this is the first one, NumPy arrays. This is teaching you about the data structure itself and how to work with it. This one is teaching you about all kinds of operations you can do with NumPy. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to cover as much as I can, but it's difficult because NumPy is so big. You can do so many things with it. And in this video, you are practicing your NumPy knowledge. Now, this helps you understand colors. So if your objective is to understand how to deal with black and white or colorful images, this is a good, good place to start. Now, those tutorials are kind of on the long side. So if you're looking for a quick introduction uh, before, you know, before you off you go to your own research, you can check out this image into matrix tutorial, which is very, um, which looks better than the intro. <laughs> it's very, has lots of nice graphics and illustrations and it kind of uh, explains you how to work with images in programming and things of that sort, RGB color formats. Uh, so yeah, I would load this image into Python and I would check whether it, it has different uh, numeric values for each pixels other than zero or 255. I hope I phrased it uh, nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings from Moscow. Zdrasti, 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 z Vancouvera. Privet. Okay, okay. Python developer roadmap. Okay, Badger is sharing helpful links. By the way, guys, I have a new blog post. I don't know if it's very new, but it's in uh, pythonsimplified.ca or mariasha.com. It's basically a navigator to my channel. So if you're curious about learning Python step by step, if you're curious what information I have on my channel, as opposed to uh, um, as opposed to just kind of going through the videos one by one, I've arranged everything in a chronological order. Um, everything is here. I'm just going to post it on YouTube. There you go, guys. You got it. Or just navigate to pythonsimplify.ca, mariasha.com, and you have everything here. Now, things that I didn't film yet, I mentioned here. I let you know complex Python data types. It's all written here. My voice starts disappearing. Sorry, guys. <laughs> It's definitely uh, <laughs> a funny day today. But yeah, functions, for loops, classes, uh, practicing classes, inheritance, super, um, even, you know, creating object-oriented programming uh, interfaces with like uh, random trees in a forest, things that are very, very interesting. Some NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib tutorials, uh, things of that sort. So everything is in a very nice order. And then if you'd like to... Uh, to explore things beyond that. I even added some examples of Kiwi, KiwiMD, Pygame, Kinter, um, all those all those applications. There are GUIs, uh, web applications that are also covered. You can find all of it here. The only thing you cannot find here is my artificial intelligence simplified series. It's not over here because I'll need to spend some more time on uh, um, arranging it in a chronological order because it's very disarranged at this point of time. And yeah, so this is available to you as well if you're looking for a good step-by-step -step, uh, learning resources. Again, on top of the Udemy, Udacity, EDX, uh, Coursera, Team Treehouse examples we've seen earlier and other online academies that you can get for free. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Dark Wolf, oh, hello. Great to see you, buddy. Snake and police. Yeah, that, that refers to the matrix. <laughs> I bet you. <laughs> Snake police. Python police. Let's see. It seems many comments are getting eaten up. Eaten up? Who eats your comments? <gasps> I'll catch them. <laughs> it's it's the first time I'm using this restream um, streaming service. I may not stick with it. I may go for something else. I find that, you know, I 
I don't know if I'm seeing the real time messages or it take takes some time for them to appear. Something is funky with it. Very, very funky. Can you upload a video of deep learning concepts and share scripts? I don't have many videos about deep learning. I have a bunch, okay? But I actually, I'm just gonna keep my channel open because I refer to it all the time. But I have a recent video showing you the inference process of deep learning. There you go, it's here. Inference with Torch Tensor RT. It explains you some important concepts. And, and you know, it's not just a tutorial that is coding based. It is not just uh, based on Tensor RT, but it's also teaching you how to run inference with PyTorch in general, using a GPU, using your CPU. You know, there's different, uh, uh, even compiling your model. Now, this is the inference process and an introductory, you know, I, I didn't do it in, in the same order. I'm getting requests and I'm just posting it through. But yeah, I'm going to have to go back to AI eventually. In, in recent days, I'm getting lots of requests, um, you know, from, from people who regularly watch this channel. I got some requests on Discord. I got some requests from Ali on, uh, on LinkedIn. So yeah, I'm probably going to film some, create a neural network with PyTorch tutorial, uh, simple for everyone. Now, if you're curious in other deep learning concepts, please check out my playlist. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Oh, I have a, <laughs> here are my private playlist. This is this is how you make a sourdough at home. <laughs> Holy smokes, guys. OK, so I'm, I'm I'm going to browse from here, <laughs> from the main page. There you go. Artificial intelligence and machine learning simplified. There are some concept tutorials. This one, this one right now, the neural networks uh, for beginners, it will give you a very nice understanding of, uh, of the general idea behind uh, training and, and deep learning as well. Um, machine learning for beginners, this is just an introduction. That's the first video of the series. I just wanted to check if you guys are interested in uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. And here you actually dive a bit more deeper. You go into the perceptron, which is a single unit of logic in a neural network. It's like a neuron in a brain. Then you go to cross entropy loss, uh, which is an error function. Then you go to gradient descent, and then you actually build this neural network that we've been uh, theorizing, you know, you build it from scratch using uh, NumPy and Pandas, which are not very conventional, you know, <laughs> tools for neural networks. And yet we are using them to understand the math. So if you need a good introduction before you dive into a much, much more complicated course about deep learning and things of that sort, check out those videos. Now, another another video I recommend to check out, it's the machine learning databases. This shows you how to load those databases using PyTorch. And I'm a PyTorch kind of girl. Most of the tutorials you will see on my channel will be with PyTorch. I would skip those two, the neural network, uh, how to build a neural network with PyTorch, because it's very old. And I, it's not a smart neural network that I build. It's, it's really stupid, you know? <laughs> so I highly recommend to skip them. Or if you, in particular, if you're dealing with a bag of words and things of that sort, um, yeah, check it out check it out for sure. If, if it's something that you're struggling with, this will give you the step-by-step -step, um, breakdown of what exactly I'm doing. I don't know if I'm explaining it well <laughs> at this point of time. <laughs> it was before I started the AI series. It was one of the first videos I filmed on the channel. Um, I'm coming here from AI. What is This channel was supposed to be called Go AI, okay? It was not supposed to be Python simplified. Last moment, I decided to go for Python in general, but that was supposed to be a machine learning channel and it changed. <laughs> it's very different now. But yeah, you have here introduction to uh, CUDA, which is uh, parallel programming on GPUs, things of that sort. And you have this uh, Torch Tensor RT tutorial I just talked about earlier. But yeah, it, we do have, like, I do have some uh, AI content, machine learning content. I don't know if it's enough. But yeah, not sure why she doesn't read all the comments or she doesn't even see them yet. Yeah. A, a lot of the comments are not appearing in Restream. I was earlier on YouTube, I was fetching those comments directly, which is very inconvenient because I'm paying a lot of money for the software. I'm like, <laughs> it's it's weird service, I guess. It's weird that it doesn't cooperate with me. But yeah, I'm reading the comments I see on my interface. And this is my interface, guys. There you go. Ho oh, oh. <laughs> ho! But yeah. Yeah, you don't have to see it. Huh? Huh? Okay. Cool. What is this? Uh, we're on our own, peeps. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> yeah, sorry guys. I don't know what's what's up with this streaming thing. Something is really messy. I'm going to go back to StreamYard. My apologies, guys. I thought it's better. A lot of people are recommending it. I had no idea it will be so complex. Okay. Python in PIC, uh, programmable logic controller software with hardware in industry. I think a good project to develop. Mm, I don't think I got you. I don't think I got you. Uh, okay. People are talking to each other. Perfect. That's awesome. We're trying to build here a community uh, that uh, that supports one another. We already have Badger and we already have uh, Josh helping out in the comments, but we have other talented developers also pinching in and trying to uh, to advise and guide uh, some newcomers. And yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll build a much nicer system. We'll grow faster. It might become programming simplified. We already actually have a programming simplified community GitHub account uh, for our discord moderation team team yeah <laughs> my voice disappeared how do you like the university of london thus far i don't like it i wish i <laughs> sorry i, I don't want to be in, like i don't want to be judgmental but they ignore me and it's easy for them to ignore me because i don't live in london and they know it um a lot of things are very not unprofessional i find them very disturbing because in the end of the day, when you start learning with a certain university, if you if you leave, if you move to a different place, you're kind of penalized with some of your credits. You're kind of, you know, and, and you need to start from scratch. <laughs> it's weird because it, you, you start a university, you stick with them, right? So so I started them. They At first, they had a bit more support. At first, it was not as bad in terms of communicating with them. They were actually they were answering in a reasonable time. It was fine. It was it was nice communication. And then two semesters after, it, just, it became a gong show. It, it just, they don't care. They have way too many students signing up to those online programs. Um, it's, you, you end up losing motivation. And another thing that is really bugging me is how they push political content onto us as, as though it's an example. And it, 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 it really upsets me because I come from marketing. I understand a thing or two about marketing and how to present things better than they actually are. When your example, when you're talking about uh, propositions and logic, so for example, instead of using an example of if it is raining, I will go to the pool. If it is, you know, it, it's simple examples. So in one of the examples, I'm not from Britain. I know nothing about Brexit. Okay, I'm just an international student, and this course is 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 given to international students. I have zero opinions about Brexit because I don't live in uh, in London. But one of the examples was like, if Brexit passes, then all the doctors and nurses will stop making money and they will all quit. So I don't know much about Brexit, but just by how my teacher presented it, it sounds like it's a bad thing. Now, Brexit happened a while ago, and it looks like nurses and doctors are still working in London. So I don't know. I don't know what it's all about. It's weird. I I don't know why they're pushing this content on people who don't really have any opinion on or background, you know, and that's just one of the examples, you know, what really upset me in the recent, uh, um, there was a midterm only a few weeks ago and the example they chose as this is how your midterm should look like. This is how your research should be. The topic was fake news, detecting fake news. I mean, why are you pushing political content on people like i never speak about my political opinions i never speak about what my ideology is or how i see the world because i find it unethical my teachers in 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 school my teachers in in um, in high school in elementary they never talked about politics with me i don't know who they were voting for i don't know what were their ideology and i don't care it's not their place to 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 talk to me about that. It's the place of my parents, it's the place of my friends, my environment. You know, when you're learning from somebody, you don't just learn the topics they teach you, you kind of get inspired by that person, you know? And and I'm just shocked. I'm just shocked to see all this. It's just, it just feels so unethical. And that's why I don't, I, I maybe it's every university. Maybe it's not just the University of London. I don't know, guys. That's that's the only university I, I tried. You know, I almost went to SFU here um, in Canada, and um, it's 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 actually really nice. It's a really nice university. I may have made a slight mistake there, but uh, it is what it is. It is what it is. I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna cry about it. <laughs> it's I, what what needs to happen happens. Okay, I'm here. 
So what is your answer? Does one need any tutor or mentor for programming? Uh, oh, I'm getting some Discord. I'm getting some messages on Discord, guys. Sorry. So what is your answer? Uh, my answer is you decide, not me. I don't think you need one. I think you need a general sense of direction and you need to watch this video from the beginning if you're just tuning in. I was sharing some really cool free learning resource where you can explore different of opportunities. I'm not here to show you, you know, what to learn. I'm here to give you some tools that will help you find what you want to learn and, and do it efficiently. Uh, that's that's my ideology. That's you know, that's the only ideology I'm willing to share. <laughs> I don't think it's very political. Uh, use mind map to plan your program out. Hmm, nice suggestion. Yeah, for sure. Some uh, brainstorming. Just uh, just make take a piece of pen and paper and start start. Uh, start designing things see how it goes how much statistic knowledge do we need to have for machine learning oh all the statistic knowledge in the world statistics are machine learning in a way <laughs> they are they are so so everything that has to do with machine learning is just a set of, of it's many many algorithms that are chained together in a sequential way if you look at all those algorithms separately they're very very simple they're doing very simple things but you need to know how to connect them to one another now, that's not all, <laughs> you know, just because you have a neural network, you trained it, it is now trained on your data. It doesn't mean that it's smart. You also need to learn how to optimize it. So the first thing you need to do with, with machine learning, if you cannot design a neural network with a pen and a piece of paper, you're not ready to move on to the computer implementation. Learn how to do the math behind machine learning. You can find it on my channel. I have a really nice uh, playlist about it. But before you know the math, it, don't even look at machine learning because it's not like you, you'll be confused. You will do what you need to do. You will finish your project. It will work. But how exactly do you optimize it? How do you make it work for other data? How do you make it work better for your data? How do you make sure it's a smart neural network and it's not wrong 50% of the times? You don't have those tools if you don't understand the math behind the commands you type. So a lot, a lot of machine learning is statistic. A majority is statistics and analytics. What would you recommend to build a clinic management system? Hmm. It sounds like a web application to me. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's not, um, I don't have a clinic. <laughs> You'll definitely need a nice database. You need to start from designing a database for this clinic, but uh... <laughs> whatever floats your boat, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Guys, stop. Uh... Ah, this is actually my university sending me results of a test that I, that I did half a year ago. Another thing that I didn't like. <laughs> It takes them way too long to check. You know, it, you, you get to your final exams. You never even got the results of your midterm. So you don't know if you understand the topic. You don't know if you're clueless or if you're a genius. You have zero, uh, zero way of checking your understanding, which is insane. Insane, you guys. I didn't expect it to be so, so messy. And I didn't expect to get so... It to, to get so frustrated. Um, I'm very frustrated. I need your motivation to to keep studying nicely because I'm. I lost everything. I lost all the motivation. Are you pursuing a master degree in computer science? I'm doing a bachelor's at the moment. I might do a master's, maybe, maybe. But if I'm doing a master's, it's not going to be in computer science. It's going to be in biology, something that has to do with splicer genetics. I would like to apply my AI knowledge on human organisms as well. We have the technology, you guys, and if only bad people know how to do this, we'll be in big, big trouble. I don't mind volunteering my <laughs> my time to study something just to make sure we're not messing up our life, <laughs> our earth. You know, we're not giving it to the machines. Yeah. Пусть сразу программировать сложные, одним будет меньше у нас эпеха. I didn't get this word, but yeah, it's a suggestion, you know, start programming the hardest things, the, the hardest uh, stuff. Yeah, it's, I, I, I'm good with I'm good with reading Russian, but not all the words I understand. You know, it's the, that's the problem of <laughs> being multilingual. You know, I, I, I get a bit from each language, but not exactly, <laughs> but I'm not exactly proficient. I left, um, 
I left Crimea when I was six year old uh, and I speak to my family in, uh, in Russian all the time, you know, uh, but that's the only practice I get. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Uh, where do you think better to study uh, in Canada, Ontario or BC? I know both have very good colleges and university. I'm, I don't think it, uh, it depends on what you like. You know, Ontario is a very, is, is a, is, I, I cannot tell you about studying, but I can tell you about the cities. I've been to, uh, I've been to Toronto, which is, which is the main city of, uh, of Ontario. And I live in Vancouver. So obviously I prefer Vancouver. <laughs> I prefer BC, uh, British Columbia. Now, the, the some people do prefer Toronto. They do prefer because there are lots of cultures. There's lots of uh, opportunities for business. It's a much busier metropolitan than in here. Uh, Vancouver is actually kind of small. It's not a very big city. Downtown Vancouver is not it's not huge, you know. But uh, the opportunities that we have here are different from opportunities you have there. If you know Mandarin. Vancouver is probably a better option for you. But if you don't, a lot of the jobs will be kind of, um, you may not have access to a lot of the jobs here because they, we have a very big Asian community here. We are uh, the Pacific, we're sharing the Pacific Ocean. You know, the Vancouver port is dealing with China all the time. So uh, if, you know, if, if it's something that is interesting to you, keep that in mind. Another thing is that BC is full of nature. I I'm trying to move away. I cannot because it's just too beautiful and I love this place too much. Everywhere you go, there's a, there's a lake. And when I'm saying a lake, I don't mean a tiny, small lake that you can see everywhere. No, it's just astonishing. You're standing there, you look around, there's mountains and there's trees and there's forests and you can find it within neighborhoods. Like, I'm going to post a picture of, of the view from my window. It's insane, you guys. You can see the Pacific Ocean outlet. Um, it's, it's incredible. So the views, if you're into nature, if you're into camping, if you're into kayaking, if you're into outdoors, Vancouver is much better in terms of nature and in terms of uh, these type of stuff. Ontario is more for business oriented people. Like I, that, that's how I find it. Um, very busy metropolitan. I find it very gray, very, very gray, even though there are lots of parks around it. Um, I, I don't know, though, if in terms of weather you have a lot of time to enjoy um, enjoy there because winters are very cold, very cold in Ontario. Arguably colder than Edmonton, where it's minus 40 degrees with no wind, but minus 13 degrees with wind actually might be colder. I'm not sure. I haven't been to Toronto in, a, in, in the winter, but I heard it's not, it's not exciting. <laughs> People don't really like it. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what else we have. Maria, interesting. Твое мнение, если если воз возрастное органичное для изучения программирования возрастное органичение ограниче возрастное органичение. Okay, I got it. Okay, so Dimitri is asking, is there an age limitation? for uh, studying programming, no. I've seen, I, I had comments from somebody who's 18, 80 years old, eight zero, okay? And he was asking me things about programming. He's like, yeah, hey, I can't believe that it, when I'm 80, I start doing this. So there is no age limit to anything. I started learning when I was 12, but I got comments from people who started when they were seven and eight, so. Zero limit. Nikakova ограничения, Dima, учись как хочешь, учи детей, учи взрослых. It's it's just I think that programming is just a it's just a way for you to interact with with computers and whether you'd like to to have it as your work whether you'd like to have it as your hobby in both cases it's a good thing now guys my voice really disappearing I'm gonna go over a few other <laughs> I'm gonna go over a few other comments and we're gonna cut it off because my tea is about to be over and it doesn't help me anymore. <laughs> Mm. Thanks for making programming videos I already code, but you're changing the world. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'm trying to share as much information as I can. Some people like it. Some people don't. <laughs> some people have problems with it, but I usually pin those comments to the top and we check if it's really problematic or not. You know, it's mostly a community thing. We're creating discussions. We're creating all kinds. We're sharing knowledge with one another, not just myself. 
you know, in the comments, very often, even if the video doesn't give you an answer to what you're looking for, maybe you'll find it in the comments. I had a video, I think my, my first uh, Dear Pi GUI video, they had some issues with um, they had some issues with the platform. They 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 couldn't uh, they they were like breaking issues and nobody was was able to fix it. And the solution was in the comments of my video. So I I this video got viral like crazy. I didn't have many subscribers, but it passed the one hundred thousand views like this. You know, it's it was the first video of mine that ever got through. And this was I believe because of a comment uh, by one of the viewers. So. Everything, everything below the video is just giving you extra information. The pinned comment is usually one where there's the most significant amount of information and helpful advice. I try to pin it to the top, and yeah, this is this is for all of us. Ipuzirom sortiruit pust eto samoje bistre. <laughs> I don't understand slang in Russian. I understand like regular words. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna avoid because because I think it's embarrassing my uh, my Russian reading. <laughs> it's not a live skill I have. Okay, greetings from Peru. Hello, hello, hello from Canada. Okay. Hey Maria, do you sincerely think Skinter is configured to make production ready apps in Python? Hell no. The, again, like it, it depends. Kinter wouldn't exist if it was so bad, and it wouldn't be so popular if it was so bad and nobody was using it. So I'm assuming somebody's using it. That's that's just, that's just how I see it. Just because something is not is not commonly used doesn't mean that it cannot be used in the future. I'm not a big fan of Kinter to begin with, but uh, I'm not judging anyone who's using it. Really. <clears throat> oh my god guys i'm dying <laughs> let's see let's see what i have let's see the very last comment sorry guys i'm just gonna scroll to the very bottom let's see a few more anyone know the great online resource regarding parallel and distributed system there's a lot of parallel computing um resources on nvidia okay they they offer lots of stuff for that but they're slightly complicated. I find them not very straightforward. Ooh, guys, guys, ooh, I'm dying. Hey, I really like your channel. Will you ever make a systems programming tutorial? Systems for I, we might get there. I never say never. With me, the more requests I get on the topic, the more likely I'll cover it soon. Got to drop grade three. We'll catch up recording to finish bye bye bob have fun enjoy enjoy yeah i'm about to finish too because i i cannot keep speaking you guys we're deleting money paper nickels dying quarters we're going for digitals um i don't know if it will happen hopefully it will not happen because if we go there there's no going back you guys there's no coming back disappointed with your russian <laughs> Извиняюсь, Алексей. Я хорошо говорю, я плохо читаю. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's a, it's a problem. See, I left, I, I left Crimea before I went to school, so I learned how to read and write basically on my own. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, folks. Извиняюсь to all the Russian-speaking people. I'm, yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. That's what you get. Hey, six years. That's all I. That's that's all I had in the Russian-speaking country. I grew up in the Middle East, folks. Hey, the badgering business has been blooming lately. How's it been? Badgering business. Badger, what do you know about the badgering business? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, what else? Last comments, you guys. Last comments. Wow, great Russian. Is it, Alex? <laughs> I was just... <laughs> See the the same the same uh, different points of view over the same uh, situation. <laughs> I'm glad you're not disappointed. Okay, Power BI happily eats pandas data frames if you're using Python to load data. I never tried it. Thanks for the recommendation, Serial Port. I'll definitely check it out. Mm, I will. I will. I will. Uh, one of a question I get for every stream: Are you married? Check it out. Check it out. Yep. 
Yep, I am engaged to the man of my dreams, my Super Mario. He's amazing. Is there a way to check my programming skills before applying for first job in IT? Uh, try, try to go for an informational interview or go to our Discord server where we might be able to review your work and tell you if it's... Um, and give us give give uh, our feedback to you because I don't know if we can tell you if this will get you hired or not, but we can probably share what we think about your work if you'd like. We're there on Discord to help. Just please navigate to my channel page. This is Python Simplified on YouTube, and click on this Discord link. You can also find the Discord link in the description. Please do, please do join. This is some extra resources. Now I don't have. I sometimes don't have a lot of time to to answer comments. I try to do this as much as I can. But uh, on Discord, there are so many talented developers who are helping you guys out. We have the moderators who, who have some incredible skills. They're there to help. And we also have regular users, uh, people who are who just, you know, real people sharing information in real time with you. So if you need any feedback, just ask as many people as you can. Um, we actually have... A new feature, which is a uh, a compiler bot, it checks if your code is correct before you submit it. Now, I don't think that this is what you meant uh, for the first job interview, uh, but it actually checks whether your code is is right or not, if it can be compiled or not. Also on Discord, uh, your Python courses are better some other YouTubers. Thank you, thank you so much. I tried my best. I tried my best. For some people, they like simplified examples, something that is like way more simple than the industry uses. Some people prefer more detailed and strict examples. You can see all of those opinions in the comments. I don't disagree with any. I just, I have my way of doing things. I have my capabilities of explaining things. I'm not going to speak in high level language because I don't, <laughs> I don't speak that way. I don't talk that way. And I prefer to to fill my tutorials, you know, as natural as I can. If I don't say the word preposterous <laughs> all the time, I'm not going to use it in the tutorial, you know? So I, I speak what I speak. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for the feedback. We meet again, Badger. <laughs> Yang Zuko. Hello, Yang Zuko. Okay. Why are you so pretty? I try. <laughs> I try. Thank you. Thank you so much. I don't know. <laughs> It's, it's, uh, what you see is what you get. That's what I'm working with. <laughs> Do you use Power BI or Tableau? No, no, Sir D. I didn't have a chance to try Power BI or Tableau, but Ali recommended me Tableau. Um, yeah, I'm going to check it out. Yeah, thank you for the recommendations. It's data science related, eh? Bob, best way to learn ML, learn maths and statistics. That's right. That's right. 100%. 100%. Let's see. Let's see. Um, some other comments. You should create 50 project course on Udemy. We'll buy it for sure. I, I don't want you to buy my courses. I want you to watch them for free. I want you to have all the ability in the world and all the time you need to study and do whatever you want. Philosophically, I don't believe that school is something that we should pay for. I believe that if it's something that is being delivered online, especially by somebody who is not a qualified teacher, you know, it's not something that I'm comfortable with charging you in any shape or form. You know, you can always support the channel. You can share uh, the videos. You can do all kinds of cool stuff to help me. But I don't want, you know, unless you're a millionaire and you have a lot of money to throw or you're sitting really, really well and you get a lot of value and you have some spare cash. Sure, I'll take your money, but I don't want to I don't want you know, 16 year old kids, you know, to be locked out of my courses just because they cannot afford a, a course. No, I want it to be available for everyone. That's just my philosophy. That's my way of life. And if you ever see me doing something like this, this means that I, I'm completely corrupt. You know, I am no longer, you know, a straightforward and honest person. That means that something very messed up has happened. Okay. That's, that would be Python corrupted, not <laughs> Python simplified. So yeah. I don't believe in it. Never, never will do it. I appreciate any form of donation on YouTube. If you do have lots of money, please send me some stickers and super chats, whatever you can. But I, it's, it's, it's a bonus. That's not what I do this for. It is a great bonus 
to you know to to be able to to get those tips but in the end of the day i'm here to help everything else beyond that is great i accept it but uh, yeah i don't expect you to to pay me in any shape or form questions teacher would you make a robot to make pizza for a business <laughs> in restaurant i'm thinking about it <laughs> that's more of a mechanical engineer kind of a situation um <laughs> yeah i actually i'm making my own pizza my uh, my spouse got me a kitchen aid for my birthday so we're not buying bread anymore i'm baking our own bread same goes for well, actually pizza we do we do order some we have some really nice pizza on the mountain here uh, really tasty Hi, Maria. Greetings from Brazil. Dead on political pushes. A lot of projects in machine learning to find range, rage speech, for instance. And this bias is not only universities. Yeah, I, I don't like this. <laughs> See, when people will, when people are labeling something as rage speech, is that really rage speech or is it just a label they put on it? That That's a good question because I don't know about you guys, but I'm not honest about, I'm, I'm trying to be honest about things that have to do with programming, things that are, you know, directly related to Python Simplified. But any question beyond, I'm trying as much as I can not to share any personal information about anything because I don't know what it will be used for. In our days, it doesn't matter what you say, it, it, it kind of, it, there's, it, there's a backlash. You can be the most polite and nicest person, but somebody doesn't like a word part of your speech, they cancel you. So I don't know how many people are truly honest in their comments, in their posts. I, I am not, you know, I'm, I'm, I am when it comes to programming, I am when it comes to personal experience. But if you ask me about politics, there's no way I'm going to give you a, a, an answer. If you ask me about what I think about Ukraine, what I think about this and that, I will never give you the answer that I actually want to give you. Because if I do, I'm going to be in big, big trouble. And it doesn't matter if it's an answer that you're going to like, because our society is so divided at this point of time. You know, family members don't speak to other family members. We, we have it. You know, it's something that happens to a lot, you know, especially if you're from my region. In the end of the day, it's all about this speech analytics, this this anal analyzing if somebody is depressed, if somebody is angry, if somebody, I don't believe it because I don't believe that people are ha honest to begin with. I don't, I think we're filtering ourselves every time we write comments. Now I get comments, I get critiques about my videos that are legitimate critiques. You know, I don't do things perfectly. Sometimes you can correct me, that's fine. But when I get those comments, people are so apologizing and I don't want to disrespect you. And really, I don't want you. I don't want you to be offended. And I'm so sorry if I'm being. Don't apologize. Speak your mind with me. Nobody's going to if, if somebody's going to try to, to, you know, politically correct you, you know, just ping me. Let me know. I'm going to get on it. I don't like it when people are canceling other people and when they, whenever they're preventing other people from speaking their mind. It's not the internet I grew up with. It's not the experience um, you know, I'm familiar with. We lived in a certain way for many, many years and everything was rainbows and butterflies. Now you're not allowed to say the word woman. That's insane. I'm a woman. So when you call me a woman, why do you apologize? It's, it's, it's gone off the rails, our society. It's, it's crazy. And uh, yeah. You're right. I don't trust this sentiment analysis uh, type of networks. I don't think that what they're actually detecting is rage. I think they're detecting specific keywords that are uh, based off political, you know, that they're from the opposite political uh, scale. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Maybe on Rumble. <laughs> Maybe on Rumble. You know, and, and I don't know if you guys know, but in Canada, they're about to pass a bill that our internet will be restricted, like in China. So. Things are going crazy, folks. Things are going crazy. C11, this build is called, this build, the name of it. Yeah. <laughs> so many of my friends are leaving. I'm just, um, I feel like I'm the only one who's staying here, saving the fort, you know, stay, staying here, <laughs> obligated to stay. I'm not going anywhere. Question, teacher, would you make, ah, we already seen this one. Okay. 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 Cool. So let's, let's go down. Let's see less, less few comments. Oh, that's it. And all the comments disappeared again. This is the last comment I see here. You guys can verify that. I'm just, I'm going to pull it out. Yeah, that's the last comment I can see, folks. 
that's it. So if you're thinking about using a streaming service, you know, and if you're wondering whether StreamYard or Restream are, if you're wondering between them, uh, do not go for Restream, okay? I just wasted 50 bucks on them. Going back to StreamYard as soon as possible because this is, yo, guys, that's the reason why I use it is so it can centralize all my comments on the same platform. You know, if I have to go through my YouTube comments separately and my uh, my LinkedIn comments separately, it's not sustainable. It's not a system that I can maintain, right? So that's why I'm using this streaming service and it doesn't show me your comments. So <laughs> my apologies, you guys. I'm going to fix it for the next stream. I'm going to, I think I'm going to complain. I'm going to complain, folks, and I'm going to use this stream for my complaint. <laughs> Now, thank you so much for being here. My voice is disappearing. I wish I can stay longer. I, you know, I'm, I've am i been live for two hours. I still have one more hour before my camera <laughs> stops working. Um, and yeah, I have to I have to go right now. Thank you so much for being here. Once again, you can find all the resources we talked about in the beginning of the stream inside this um, inside the slide of mine. I've shared it in the description. Don't forget to confirm your registration for the CoJam. You have to do this in the in those 24 hours. If you don't, you will not be able to participate. We would love to see you in the CoJam. We don't care that you're a beginner. We don't care if you're a mad scientist. Please join us. We would love to see your input. We would love to see what kind of projects you come up with. Because honestly, you guys, there is not a lot of Python sound and audio projects. You don't have to go for sound and audio, but if you do, you may be one of the only ones, you know, one of the only projects providing an example on GitHub. And you'll be shared on my channel, you know, 100,000 people will be exposed to it. So it's a good way to start advancing your computer science career, regardless of your experience. Okay, that's why we're there. Um, join us on Discord, please do. The moderators will help you out. I'm going to jump in as well. I'm going to take a bit of time to uh, to rest before I do so. <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. I, I was supposed to go live yesterday. I couldn't. My voice was way worse. And yeah, hopefully I'll be able to speak after today. <laughs> so yeah, see you guys. Have a good one. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye.